Hi, I'm Marco with the Iris CRM team at NMI, here to share with you the latest enhancements for our web forms functionality that will be available to users April 2023. To start it off, we're going to actually be in the PDF mapping tool, which I know the video is about web forms, but you'll see why it's related in just a second. Much like the web forms tool, the PDF mapper allows you to drag and drop lead fields and map them to a PDF document for e-signature purposes so that the data that is filled out is populated into the form for signature. As indicated by all of the green fields in the PDF on the right, the, those are fields that have been mapped from the lead. We're gonna assume that I have completed mapping this PDF and I'm happy with the fields and we're all set to move on. So we'll go over to the web forms functionality to show why it's related to the PDF. I'm adding a new form and I've filled out all of the data already for us. So PaySafe form, I've selected the PaySafe application as my e-signature application. That's the one I just showed you that I was mapping. Set myself as the sender for static links. And then you'll see a new checkbox, which won't be checked by default. You have to check it yourself if you want to utilize this functionality. And this will generate a web form for you based on the attached eSign app that you've selected here. So in my case, the PaySafe MPA. Go ahead and complete the rest of the required fields and select your templates that merchants will receive uh, just like you normally would with web forms and click add. The result is a fully created and fully functional web form that you didn't have to do any manual work for. Iris CRM has automatically created this layout and the sections as well as mapped the fields that you had already mapped here on the PDF, therefore cutting your lead field mapping in half. You only have to do it on the eSign PDF and not on the web form if you generate it this way. So if you have a new MPA that comes in, you finish mapping the MPA and you know you wanna turn that exact MPA into a web form for your merchants to complete, just check that checkbox when adding a new form and voila, it will create this fully functional web form for you. Uh, Iris CRM is doing its best to interpret the layout. However, it's based on the PDF section. So for example, this main pay save section is you know half of the screen, one column, if you will, uh, and kind of scrunched and very long. This is not very user friendly. So you could update it so that it's the full width of the form. You can move fields around so there's more than one field per row. So the user isn't scrolling on and on forever. And you could remove some fields or add additional fields if the web form is going to be slightly different. But basically, it gives you a starting point and saves you time from getting there. So you're not manually creating all of this. So we're very excited about that. Moving on to the next thing, which will seem very small, but I think save you, your merchants, and our support team uh, a lot of headaches. There was frustration that we received uh, in feedback from clients where there was a very generic error that was showing up for merchants when they were trying to complete web forms. And it literally just said server error or unknown error. And the root issue was that it was a web form that had e-signature connected to it. So once the web form was completed, it was gonna generate an e-sign. However, the e-sign sender field, which is an email field with a specific checkbox set, set up in the web form settings, wasn't configured and it needs to be in order for the eSign functionality to work. But it was basically allowing a merchant to go through the entire web form, essentially complete it, but then not submit it and move on to the next step. So they spent all this time and effort completing the form, filling in their data just to be denied for an unknown reason, which created frustration for the merchant and for our clients who also weren't sure and also frustrated that they couldn't you know, move things along with their merchant. So what we did was we added these warning messages for existing web forms that are missing this signer field configuration. So if there's an e-sign doc linked, but there's no signer field configured, then it'll show this error. We'll also prevent you from moving forward with saving and creating new forms. If you've said, yes, there's an e-sign document for this web form. However, there's an email field that has not been configured for the signer to make sure you configure it. And so we don't even get to the point where your merchants are frustrated with not being able to complete the form. So eliminating the error altogether uh, to save everyone time and frustration. So we hope that helps and makes things a little bit more clear for you and your merchants. Moving on to what I think is the biggest piece of functionality we are releasing this month, which is 
generating a web form from a lead. So here I have Vaughn's 1000 Spirits, great restaurant in Seattle, highly recommend if you're ever there. My sales reps you know, have worked hard to fill out all of this data, not only the business info, but owner info, and also specific pricing info for this merchant, much like you and your team would have for your leads. And then we will go to this new web forms tab to show you how this all relates and ties together to make your life easier and how we can streamline the merchant boarding process. Here on the web forms tab, I'm going to select a web form that I'm going to send to this lead for them to complete. So we're going to assume that is an MPA that I want them to complete and ultimately sign so we can get them boarded and processing credit cards. So I'm going to select Marco's MPA, which is mapped uh, how I want it to be for this example. I'm going to go ahead and generate this. I'm going to replace the existing one from a previous test I did. Here I have my email template. You can change your email template if you need to, uh, just like you normally would with eSign. The web forms functionality is based heavily on our eSign flows that you are used to. And in it, it will have a unique link for the merchant to complete the web form kind of like when you're sending them already if you're leveraging web forms currently. So we go ahead and send that out. Great, email sent successfully. It's gonna show a status of sent. And let's see what is so cool about this and why I'm saying this is probably the most important thing we're releasing uh, as part of these enhancements. If we go to preview, we can see what the web form looks like for the merchant. And here you can see that all of this info has been populated from the lead record like I was showing you all of this data was in there, and because it was mapped, it populated the values that I already had so that my merchant or my team doesn't have to manually input all this data again, because you've likely either you know imported it or your staff was manually adding it either from a previous contact form or from phone calls with the merchant as your conversations progressed. So all of this is in here, including the pricing that you've set and mapped from the fields. So this is accurate pricing. It's not generic defaults that you've created in the default value templates. That's still possible. However, you can choose to do it with the lead field mappings. So it's specific on a merchant by merchant basis and what your sales reps have sold to the merchant. And then also the fees are mapped here as well. The merchant will complete the document uploads, uh, any other required fields, submit the form, and that'd take them to e-sign like normal. Since that's existing functionality, we're not going to go over that today. And so then you'll have all of these web forms that you're sending out. You can track them on the individual lead record that you sent them from, but you can also see it in aggregate with this new web forms widget, which may look familiar. Again, it's modeled off of the eSign functionality where you can see a summary based on status and the time frame of when it was sent. So I'm looking at my sent ones for March got five of them. And here I have the status and actions open. In the actions, I can go ahead and resend this. So you can go through and follow up if you know you want to check on merchants who you've sent applications to, but haven't opened them, haven't signed them that you want to move forward. So you can board them and you know ultimately start collecting residuals from. You know, you can go through and manage them from here rather than trying to bounce between leads and figure it out that way. So just an easier way of tracking for you. And then uh, finally, we also have added notifications, again, uh, modeled after the e-signature activity. So web form activity, uh, we have them on mobile, email, and uh, for the pop-ups. Let's see if I have one here. It didn't show me the opened, uh, but you will see web form open and web form closed, just like you see e-sign open and e-sign completed or e-sign signed. So your users will be able to stay on top of the leads, the merchants that they're working with. So I know there was a lot of functionality that I showed you today. Our support team would be happy to explain more. If you have any questions or run into any issues, please do contact them. Uh, I hope this video is helpful. And ultimately, uh, I hope you make use of this functionality to sign more merchants and streamline uh, the workflow operations. I know a lot of clients gave great feedback to help us get to this. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.